there, this is Rod Ward from Info Semantics, and today I'm going to talk to you about templates, Adobe Captivate templates. Now, if you're a Captivate developer, and you should be if you're watching this, then you know that the CPTL format is a Captivate template, the CPTX format is a Captivate project. So you should always be developing your course in a Captivate project file, not a Captivate template file. Otherwise, you can encounter quite a few problems doing that. So how do we use the template file? Well, when a lot of Captivate developers think that template files basically are uh, what you use to uh, control the look and feel of the project. And so when they go on the web and they look for Captivate templates, what they're likely to find is something like these ones here. So you see that there's uh, quite a lot of uh, very fancy looking ones. They're obviously developed with the assistance of a graphic artist or someone with graphics background. They have characters, they have lots of colors, they have uh, interesting backgrounds. And uh, here's another one over here from a different developer, Captivate Templates. And you can see that they, they generally sort of look a little bit the same. And it's all about the eye candy for most of these templates, quite frankly. But what if you, we're looking more for a template that was about functionality and the eye candy or the, the look and feel basically had to change for each client that you work for. Well, that's the situation that I'm actually in. I develop e-learning courses under contract for business clients. And most of the time when I go in to develop an e-learning course for the client, they already have a very strict set of guidelines about the appearance of that e-learning and, and what it's going to look like in terms of the branding and the color scheme. So you very quickly find that there is a group of people in that organization who are the guardians of that organization's branding and they are pretty fierce in, in some cases. Uh, so if you don't want to get on the wrong side of those people, the people that I, I'm nicknamed the style Nazis, uh, the communications department or the branding department or whoever they happen to be, external affairs, they, have, they go under a whole heap of different names but their purpose in life is to guard the brand of the company and keep everything consistent with the look and feel that they have dictated that company should have. So that means the color schemes, that means how the logo is used, and it turns out that e-learning they think of as pretty much just something like PowerPoint, so it's no surprise that most of the time what you're complying with is something that looks like their PowerPoint template. So what I've done in, uh, in my professional life in, in working for these types of clients in business and sometimes even in government is develop a, a template that I take from client to client and that template is all about functionality. It's not dictating the look and feel because I'm going to go into that client and in, in the first week or so that I'm with that client, I'm going to set up the look and feel to match what that client will approve. And from then on, I don't have to worry about it. So what I'm going to show you today is the template that I currently use for my clients. And this is pretty much the template I use for all of my clients, in fact, because it saves me quite a bit of time. The history here is that I think around about Captivate 5, when I was first started using that some quite some years ago now, uh, I had noticed a pattern that wherever I went, certain things didn't change that much, but the color schemes and everything did, according to the client. So I adopted the process of having a template that I could take along and then basically once I doctored that template to look like what it needed to be for that client, I could use that template for all of the courses I develop, all the modules of all the courses that I develop. So I'm just going to show you how that works. So here we have Captivate 8 open and you'll notice on the splash screen you've got the recent projects, you've also got new projects and one of the options to begin a new project is to do it from the template. So if I double click this item, and because I've been playing around here, it's going to bring you into the area where I've got my templates. You'll notice that I have um, a D drive here where I keep all my projects. And in my projects, there'll be a whole heap of uh, different clients. And one of them will say is my company, Info Semantics. And in that, I will have the Captivate templates for that, for that particular client. So here, I have the template file, just to show you that that is actually a CPTL file, not a CPTX. And I'm going to start a CPTX file from this just by clicking the Open button down there. And this may take a little time to, uh, for Captivate 8 to open up the template and then spawn 
a project file from the template. And at the end of it, you will have something that looks like this. Okay, so we have a, a Captivate project file open now. And on the left hand side in the film strip there, we have a number of slides and slide groups. So I'm just going to run through these slide groups with you and just explain the purpose of each one. And then in other video tutorials in this series, we'll explain more and more about what's built into this template. It is actually deceptive how much is, is in there. But just to quickly run through the purpose of each of these slides or slide groups. The very first slide that you can see here is really just a blank slide. So it has a little developer note on there, but you really only need that if you have never seen this template before. So I'm just going to delete that. And as you'll notice, there's really nothing on this slide. Why would I do that? The reason is that uh, sometimes Captivate developers start off putting their advanced actions or their videos or their logos and graphics and on the, uh, the very first slide in a project and then run into problems with the playback or with the functionality of that. My suggestion to all of you Captivate developers, born out of years of experience of trying to get these things to work, is don't put anything on the very first slide in your project. Don't put any advanced actions on the on slide enter event of the very first slide. Don't add your videos there. Don't put heavy graphics or anything on that slide. Just use it as an opportunity to let the Captivate project get set up and start working, load its preloaders and anything else it needs to get going and then start your project on the second slide of that. So you can then use the on enter event of the second slide to execute any setup actions that you might want. Leave that very first slide completely blank, just one or two seconds in length, and that will save you a lot of problems. The next slide group here is actually made up of uh, a few different slides. This is the developer group. This is just for the developers. So I called it design group. And in that group, I have some debugging slides. Um, I'll explain later in another tutorial how all of that works. I have a slide with some instructions for any developers that are not me that are using that. I have a slide some clients have asked that they want recorded in the project file who the developer was and when they started the project and when they finished the project. So I have a slide there aside for that if the client wants me to use that and record it. Sometimes they want that because they want to be able to contact the developer, the original developer, if for any reason they can't get the project to work or they need to update it. And we also have a slide in there for any instructional objectives. So if you wanted to record your instructional design uh, in aspects of that into uh, the project file itself, then you could do it there. Later on, I'll explain a little bit about how I approach instructional design when I'm using these, these templates and setting up these projects. So that's the design group. It's just for the designer. Nobody else is going to see that. Um, certainly not the end user of your, uh, your content. He's where you won't know it even exists. The next slide group is for branding. Remember the style Nazis? So you have to comply with, uh, with what they want. So in this section I might have a number of objects with a certain color scheme set up. I might have logos for the company, different size logos, different shape logos that they have. I'll store them all in here so I know where to find them very easily. Of course, they are in the Captivate library as well if they're sitting in here, but I just find it easy to have them right up front where I need them. And you might also have uh, some um, flowcharts or uh, arrows, different shapes that you want to use for specific types of diagrams. Well, you can put all of that in there. That's just for the branding side of it. One thing that I will point out to you here also when we come to branding, as I mentioned, every client has a color scheme and the Style Nazis will give you a branding guide usually that lays out what the color scheme is. One of the first things I do is go into this slide and here down the side of it in the scrap area where it doesn't get seen are a number of highlight boxes and that's where I set up my swatch, if you like, for the color scheme for that client. That means that all I have to do is just click on those and uh, they're in a group as it were, so I can just sort of go down a little bit further. So I, I highlight them, I change the look and feel or change the color of that particular highlight box to match the colors uh, of their, their branding guideline. And the great thing about that is that then no matter where I am in the project from then on, because they're set to actually be to show for rest of project, even though they're sitting out in the scrap area and they won't end up in the final published project, but they're available to me as a developer sitting out there and then I can just choose the little eyedropper um, 
from the swatch in here and just sample them whenever I need to change a color on a on a an object or um, on a, a um, piece of text or something or a shape. It's very very handy to have it sitting there. Much easier than finding the swatch in Captivate itself. I don't actually find their swatch all that easy. So that's my branding and my design groups. They stay in the template. But what about these ones here? The next group is just to create a course intro module. In all of my courses I'll always have one short three or four minute module right up the front and that's to introduce the course and explain what the course is about. So here you'll have a title slide uh, and on the title slide will be the name of the course, the name of the module, this one would be the course introduction. I'll have a slide that talks about the prime learning objective. What is it that we want that person to get out of that course? Is it a particular area of knowledge? Is it a particular skill? Uh, the ability to perform some task, whatever it is, this slide will tell them what that is. And then I, I also want to be able to give some instructions to people who may not have used my courses before. They may not know how to navigate them or how to use the table of contents or the Captivate Play Bar. So I have a slide in there just about navigating and it will explain all of that. A number of other slides that I might need in a course intro module that I would not need in every other module of the course. Things like explaining how their LMS or their learning management system works, um, what they need to do for the quiz, etc., how to pass it and what the certificate will be, whatever those details are, but you only need to mention it once in a course, that goes in the course intro module. So these slides are all set up with the purpose of very quickly creating a course intro module. How do I then use the template to do that? Very simply, I delete the other bits I don't need. And what I end up with is a course intro module. There's all the slides I want, and all I have to do is just go in and change the name that's on the title slide here, change the name to the course name, and maybe change the, the company name, replace my logo with theirs, etc. And in a matter of a few minutes, I've got myself an, a start on the course introduction module. The next module after the course intro module is for standard modules. So here's all the slides and you'll notice that there's also a title slide with the, the name of the, uh, the course and the, the company etc in there. But the slides after this one will all be the slides that I would probably need to use in a standard course module. And that can be anything. It could be a, uh, a branching scenario. I've got a menu slide set up here that I can uh, just turn off that one. So I have a menu slide set up that will be able to change colour when people complete different sections of that module. I'll explain how all of that works and the advanced actions behind that in a different uh, video for you. And after that standard module, most standard modules will have a quiz. So here's a, a section or a group of slides that are all related to a quiz. And of course you don't have to put a quiz right at the end of the module, but that's the way that most of my clients expect it. So that's what I, I end up doing. And in this particular group of slides, I have examples of all the different types of questions in Captivate, and they're all set up and formatted and ready to go. I don't go and insert a quiz question and then have to move things around to be where I want. I've got them all set up in the template exactly how I want to go, and I find that much quicker to uh, develop content that way. So at the end of what I have here with the template, I've created a new Captivate project file if I want a course module uh, that's just a course intro, I delete out the standard module group and the quiz group. If I wanted to create a standard module without a quiz, I delete the course intro group and the quiz group. Or if I want a standard module with a quiz, I just delete the course intro group. And what I'm left with is what I want in each case. And the very final slide in this one here is just has the, the branding, so that will usually be the client's branding, and a little animation, which is very helpful to avoiding problems with learning management systems, and I'll let you know about that in a different um, tutorial. So I just wanted to introduce you to this template. Now, I'm not suggesting that you must develop your learning this way. I'm just offering you a suggestion uh, of how I do it, and I find this actually speeds up the development of courses. In fact, the, the first week that I am working for a client, uh, part of that week you're going through inductions for the client, you're working out who you have to liaise with, where the subject matter experts are, introducing yourself, and um, you're talking with the style Nazis and finding out their color scheme and their branding requirements. 
And part of that first week, I spend working on this template. And the whole purpose of that is to get it by the end of the week into a format and a look that the style Nazis and the, the branding people will be happy with and it matches their expectations. And from then on, once that's approved, I can start tuning out the modules that I need for my course without any further delay. The last thing that you want really is to end up getting towards the end of your course after having purchased a flashy looking template and then find when these people wade in at the 11th hour that you cannot use that, that color scheme because it doesn't comply with their branding. You want to get that sorted out right up front. I, I assure you that's a, a big requirement if you're going to develop courses for business. So in other tutorials, we'll delve a little bit further into what this template offers because under the hood, there is actually quite a bit built in in terms of advanced actions and, and other things that I think you would find very useful. Thank you very much for listening and you can download the template from my website. If you have any questions, then by all means send me an email through the contact um, form on the website. Thank you very much for listening.